I was talking to Suzanne last night, our director of Lifespan Religious Exploration, and she reminded me that this is the time of year when people are being bombarded with self-improvement ads. I know my own life is just a non-stop stream of Peloton ads right now. I think they're beaming them directly into my brain through some new technology. Or maybe I just need to put my phone down. Uh, that would be a New Year's resolution for you. Anyway, apropos of New Year's, Suzanne shared these words of the Reverend Nadia Boltz Weber with me, which I will share with you. Quote, There is no resolution that, if kept, will make you more worthy of love. There is no resolution that, if kept, will make you more worthy of love. Whatever the journey ahead, it is not ripped abs and toned backsides that are going to get us through 2021. It is not a cleaner kitchen or more books read or better budgeting. Not that there's anything wrong with clean kitchens and reading and budgets. But none of those things will make you more worthy of love. And none of those things fundamentally will help us shoulder the burdens ahead or meet the rising opportunities. Kindness will. Grace will for ourselves and others. Patience, community, generosity. Remembering to breathe and reminding others to do the same. I say this with confidence despite not knowing any better than anyone else what might await us in 2021. I was thinking back to this time last year, and the resolutions I was making for my own self blissfully unaware that in a few short months, COVID was going to scramble all our routines, priorities, and plans. It would be foolhardy to think I, or anyone, can predict with much confidence what awaits us in 2021. Nonetheless, we can hazard a few guesses. With the creation and rollout of the vaccines, there appears to be finally a light at the end of the tunnel. And thank God for our scientists and healthcare workers, and I will give the Trump administration its due. Operation Warp Speed is something of a scientific and technological miracle. The rollout of the vaccine has been slow going, and we fell well short of the president's goal to administer 20 million vaccines by the end of 2020, fell short by a factor of 10, but it was predictable that there were going to be all kinds of problems with the rollout. There always are. And I have confidence that this will get sorted out. President-elect Biden's ambition is to vaccinate 100 million people in the first 100 days of his administration. That would be an amazing accomplishment, but even if we fall far short, it will be progress. Of course, people have to accept the vaccine. Respect for science is a Unitarian Universalist value, and it's important is as clear now as it has ever been. So to whatever extent we can individually or collectively amplify the voices of scientists and public health experts while discouraging the spread of misinformation, this is a public good. This is one way we can help combat this virus. And we have been reminded, if we needed reminding, that public support for science and science-based public policy is essential to the long-term well-being of our nation. The other piece of good news is economists and business leaders are predicting that the economy will rebound next year, sometime in the back half of the year, and unemployment will dip back down below 5%. In the meantime, we know many are facing substantial exposure to hunger and homelessness. It is imperative we use all our collective resources to carry the vulnerable in our communities through the gap and to the other side, and then to support people as they recover from the damage wrought by the pandemic, which has fallen on communities so unequally, exposing the structural inequities in America with such savage force. My prediction is that this church's commitment to public service and collective care is something we will be called to live into ever more deeply in 2021. And that can look like different things at different times. When the Boulevard Place food pantry closed unexpectedly at the beginning of the shutdown, you organized an instant food drive and got meals to 30 families that same weekend. Then in April, you began volunteering at the Martin Luther King Jr. Center to deliver meals to residents here in our neighborhood. In April, May, and June, the Board of Trustees voted to give 100% of the offering plate to the community, 
and you responded with unprecedented generosity in your giving. At the same time, the Special Funds Committee authorized a one-time cash grant from our Beacon Fund to the MLK Center, showing creativity and flexibility in utilizing our resources to respond to the crisis. The congregation affirmed this by vote, and by June we'd given over $8,000 to the MLK Center to provide meals and emergency assistance to the community. In those early months of the pandemic shutdown, the MLK Center delivered more than 2,000 meals and distributed over $40,000 in assistance to the neighborhood, and you made a significant contribution to that effort. Meanwhile, through your work with Faith in Indiana, we, as part of a coalition of faith communities, lifted up a vision to the mayor in May and June that asked for radically expanded COVID testing in marginalized communities and housing assistance for all Indianapolis residents, including for our undocumented neighbors, who were explicitly excluded from the federal funds directed to cities. The mayor and city council responded with expanded testing and the creation of a $25 million rental assistance fund that did not discriminate. And you had a part in making that happen. Then in June and July, you marched in the streets for racial justice during the summer of uprisings, including through the streets of Butler Tarkington as part of a procession of local churches committed to resisting and undoing white supremacy. Your Share the Plate donations provided bail assistance to activists all around the country facing arrest for protesting. In the fall, you provided financial assistance directly to Indy 10 Black Lives Matter. The pandemic has highlighted the deadly impact of systemic racism on the long-term health of communities of color. In 2021, combating racism and its legacy will continue to be an urgent priority for UU congregations seeking to live out our values in the world, including, I predict, for this congregation. Then in the fall, you partnered with Faith in Indiana and UU The Vote to get out the vote during a truly unprecedented election taking place within a pandemic. In this, you were lifting up a core UU value of participation in the democratic process. Nobody had done a get out the vote campaign in a pandemic. The UUA had not attempted anything of the scope of the UU The Vote campaign, but UUI responded vigorously, sending out 1,500 postcards to prospective voters and volunteering many, many hours of phone banking. And there's so much more to be done. Did you know, one of our Faith in Indiana community organizers has been living out of a hotel in Georgia with her daughter since the end of November, knocking on doors all over the state encouraging people to vote. Many of you have had the privilege of working with Rosie Bryant. She preached at UUI in October. She's a fierce and brilliant organizer, and there she was on the ground in Georgia knocking on doors. UUI supported that work financially as a member of Faith in Indiana, And we will be working closely with Rosie in 2021 to keep moving the work of democracy forward here in Indiana. Faith in Indiana kicks off a new year of organizing with their big annual meeting in January. And I can tell you that UUI will be very well represented at that meeting with the members who have volunteered to be there. And if you want to be a part of our work with Faith in Indiana in 2021, email ministry at uui.org. Another thing UUI had never done before is a virtual giving tree, but this December you gave out over 250 presents to almost 50 adults, children, and babies who otherwise would not have gotten presents this Christmas. Huge thanks to Social Justice Chair Anita Saunders and UUI member Julia Whitaker for organizing the effort and for the many members who made it possible. On a much smaller scale, but one that makes me happy, at the end of the summer we bought a chest freezer Anticipating a greater need to deliver ready-made meals to our members, we called it the casserole ministry and put out a call for casseroles. And let me tell you, you have packed that freezer to the brim with frozen casseroles and other goodies. Please email caring at uui.org if the casserole ministry could help you or your family out for whatever reason. We will deliver to your door. All of this is to say that UUI responded with creativity, generosity, and energy to the challenges of the past year, 
and this community should be proud. And I predict we will need all of that and more for 2021, because there is a light at the end of the tunnel, but I fear the path from here to there will not be easy or quick. We're about to experience a surge on top of a surge which will likely strain our healthcare resources to the breaking point, and with community transmission hitting still greater heights, we may well experience more isolation before we experience less. The need for communal care may greatly increase before it diminishes. We will have a new president come January 21st, whatever political foolishness may transpire between now and then. It seems unlikely that political foolishness will magically evaporate. 2021 looks to be as divisive and politically unpredictable as 2020, perhaps more so. I predict we will have even greater opportunities for public expression of our UU values in 2021. Those values challenge us to bridge differences, to be open to dialogue and to look to our common humanity, but they also call us to vigorously uphold democratic principles and to defend the worth of all people. And between us and a surging white nationalist movement with authoritarian ambitions, there are some bridges that cannot be crossed. Navigating this tension will require spiritual maturity, compassion, and courage. Can we resist a rising tide of hate while remaining rooted in our universalist tradition of love? The Reverend Jason Cook says, Hate in its many forms can be easy to access, often provides immediate gratification, and destroys the soul over time. Love in its many forms can be hard to access, often provides delayed gratification, and in time anchors the soul through rough waters. End quote. Love has anchored UUI through the rough waters of 2020. There is much good that was done by this community in 2020, individually and collectively. I couldn't begin to name it all. But I can tell you that one of the truly great things has been the way you have all lived into the covenant that defines this church. Love is the spirit of this church. In the past nine months, you have time and again chosen to love one another, to reach out, to stay connected, to keep, to keep each other's spirits up and to offer your wisdom and support and care. We had three days warning to turn UUI into a virtual church. Our last physical service was March 8th. It was a poetry service, followed by a lunch to celebrate the close of the pledge drive. Then the decision was made on Thursday, March 12th, to close the campus. And by that Sunday, the 15th, the 15th, we were doing services on some new thing called Zoom. The staff did an amazing job of reorienting to operate in the new environment. So many volunteers came forward to make the transition to virtual church possible. And through it all, the Board of Trustees consistently responded to these challenges with creativity, flexibility, and a firm grounding in our UU values in navigating the congregation through all of this. You should be very proud of your elected leadership. None of us had any idea then that we'd still be here on Zoom nine months later. And I can tell you that at the beginning of the shutdown, many ministers were afraid that in a virtual environment, church simply wouldn't work that the community would disengage, drift apart, disintegrate, you have done just the opposite of that. You have come together. You have anchored this community in love. I don't know where we will be in another nine months. In my head, September sounds about right for a return to our sanctuary space in 2021, maybe following some increased outdoor gatherings in the summer. But I'm guessing... I don't know who could know. This will be driven by the facts on the ground with our same commitment to following the science and keeping the community safe. I can tell you with total confidence that whenever we return to services in the sanctuary, we will also be streaming those services to Zoom. Virtual Church is here to stay at UUI. UUI members Piero Madar and Nate Lytle have been doing amazing technical work to put that all in place. But that means you, 
members of UUI, who are shepherding this community through this particular time in its history, you will have the unique opportunity to begin to imagine what it means for UUI to be a virtual church, with members potentially in any part of the country, even the world. What does church membership mean in that context? What does service mean in that context? And here are a few other opportunities of note that you will have in 2021. If all goes well, fingers crossed, you will have the opportunity to ordain me to the UU ministry in 2021, should you so choose. That'll be a kick. Ordinations don't happen that often in the life of a church, and they are one of the most powerful ways congregations serve the larger faith, by launching new ministries. Of course, I'm biased. This spring, our Adult Religious Education Committee will be leading us through a study of the proposed Eighth Principle. I'll be preaching more about that two Sundays from now, but suffice it to say, if our congregation votes to adopt the Eighth Principle, we will have an opportunity to live into our commitment to anti-racism in a way that could be deep and transformative and shape the life of this congregation for decades to come. And you will be the congregation that begins that commitment. And finally, over the course of the next several years, within the larger world of Unitarian Universalism, there's going to be a conversation about reimagining the seven principles. That conversation will be coming to UUI in 2021. That means you will have the opportunity to engage with the meaning of this tradition on a very deep level and to help shape its future expression. And I predict that what we are learning about who we are and who we want to be as a result of this pandemic will shape this conversation about the future of Unitarian Universalism, and it will be this congregation that has that conversation. I can't predict the journey that lies before us in 2021. I believe there is a light at the end of the tunnel. I expect hard times before we get there maybe even very hard times. And I trust this community to respond to the challenges of those hard times with courage, creativity, and compassion, because that is who you have shown yourself to be in 2020. You have centered this congregation in love, love that anchors the soul through rough waters. Whatever the challenges of the journey that lie ahead for us in the months to come, Trust in yourself, trust in love, and trust in each other. Be a blessing, walk boldly in the light. This congregation is meant to shine. Blessed be, and amen.